This session with Michael Dummett begins with the presentation of Donald Davidson's views about the relation between the concepts of truth and meaning. Davidson describes what he believes should be the aim of a theory of meaning, and he discusses how this conception now differs both from his own earlier views and from the views of Michael Dummett. Davidson then defends his position against Dummett's objection that he illegitimately takes the notion of truth for granted when giving a theory of meaning. Davidson suggests that understanding the notion of error is a necessary condition for being able to interpret someone, and they discuss the relation between this notion and the notion of giving a reason for a belief. An interesting digression follows concerning Davidson's thesis that the only thing that can be a reason for a belief is another belief. The question of how we acquire the notion of truth is raised. Davidson argues that is when we acquire the notion of truth, we acquire the notion of falsity at the same time. He holds, however, that this does not commit him to bivalence, and he responds to Dummett's arguments to the contrary. In the remainder of the session, the relationship between truth and justification is explored. Dummett argues that truth is a sophisticated notion, consisting in more than just our capacity for giving reasons for what we say. Davidson denies this. He suggests that we can recognize something as a reason for something else only if we can recognize that the truth of one supports the truth of the other. By employing a number of different examples, Dummett tries to persuade Davidson that our understanding of the logical constants comprises more than just our understanding of the rules of inference that govern them. Now, if Dummett were to convince Davidson of this, it would seem that Davidson would then have to acknowledge that our understanding of the logical constants consists in our understanding their truth tables. In this case, the notion of truth involved is the sophisticated notion mentioned above. Davidson, however, refuses to accept any of Dummett's examples and remains unpersuaded by Dummett's suggestions. We now join the discussion at the London School of Economics. I'm delighted to welcome our next guest, who requires no introduction in the world of philosophy. Michael Dummett, Emeritus Professor at the University of Oxford, has agreed to join us to discuss with Donald Davidson the topics of truth and meaning. Michael. Right. Well, Donald, <coughs> I once made a criticism of you. I don't know whether you have read it or not. And it goes like this. If you consider the classical theories of truth, <coughs> I mean, correspondence theory, coherence theory, mm -hmm. uh, and so on, as they were classically framed, the objection to them, it, as it seems to me, is that they explain truth, assuming that meaning is already understood, because they treat truth they define truth as a property of propositions. And so if you want to know whether a sentence, a sentence uttered on a particular occasion, is true or not, you have to know what proposition it expresses. And to know that, you have to know what it means. Whereas, I think, uh, it's clear that truth and meaning are concepts that have to be explained together, a single complex explanation will <coughs> elucidate both concepts. It's useless to take one as already given and then try and explain in terms of it the other. Well now what I accused you of was <coughs> doing the opposite. That is to say taking truth as already understood and trying to explain meaning in terms of it. And I thought this was subject to the same criticism. So what I want to ask you is, first, do you think that that's a valid criticism of your earlier work? And secondly, is it now inapplicable to your later work? Well, I don't, I don't remember your having said this to me before, but I'm 
not, not surprised if you did. <laughs> uh, with respect to the first point, which is not what we're <clears throat> disputing at all, uh, uh, is it the case that that we somehow miss the point uh, if we try to define truth on the assumption that we already understand uh, the truth bearers yes uh, and w whether those are sentences or propositions or mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I could see that there would be reasons uh, I mean, you're assuming a lot, <laughs> yeah. obviously, uh, uh, and and there's clearly a sense in which you don't understand uh, lots of utterances or, or, or uh, sentences uh, if you don't uh, already know, or in some sense, if you don't already have the concept of truth. Mm -hmm. that, that, Mm -hmm. uh, seems to me right, uh, but but supposing that you have both those things, you know what a lot of sentences and utterances mean, uh, and and you have the concept of truth. Uh, there's there's still a, a, a philosophical question uh, of how, how to well, as many people have thought of it, how to define the notion of truth, because you yes. could know both of those things without knowing how to define it. Sure. Uh, and uh, so I don't think that's I mean it's not pointless to consider uh, correspondence theories mm -hmm. coherence theories and so forth uh, uh, realizing that of course uh, a lot's being taken for granted I mean you wouldn't know if you'd succeeded uh, or, or uh, as in the actual cases failed uh, uh, right. unless you already knew what truth mm -hmm. was and, and uh, so but but uh, so now, uh, could I or should I uh, uh, defend my own uh, work insofar as it, it looks as though I, I start with the notion of truth and try to work up to the notion of, of meaning? Uh, well, let me see. Ha have I changed my mind about this? Uh, uh, no, I don't think so, though I may see some aspects of it in a different way than I once did. 